as I wait for all the little lights and indicators on my screen to tell me that something is happening properly, right? Oh, I should have checked the audio. Oh, crap. Um, if one of you uh, would uh, care to check the Twitch it. channel, please do so. Thank you very much. Welcome to a, a, well, I guess maybe I'll wait for a second. Can I vamp for a second while she checks this to see if the audio is working properly at all? Do we know how any of this stuff works? I don't think we know how any of this stuff works. We've only done this about I don't know, 100, 200 times so far. So how can we possibly know if anything is working properly? Can you hear us, uh, uh, Marie, on the, the final Twitch? If you're watching this on YouTube, this is the technical stuff you're not supposed to see. Uh, but instead, uh, you are also, Annie is trying to hide off screen, it seems. Oh, uh, I scooched over. Um, for some reason, it's coming out on my actual, like... Computer. Okay. Well, I can hear you double. Apparently yeah. now we're we're okay. All right. Well, let's make yep. sure you clear that screen. I, I was expecting it in my headphones and very confused when it wasn't coming from my headphones. That's the nature. And of they're both. noise canceling, so I couldn't hear. <laughs> oh wow, that's. But yes. Okay. Um, are you are you gonna scooch over or scoot your camera over just slightly, or am I gonna? Um, which way did I go? I went the wrong way. <laughs> uh, I will fix this. I'm sitting in the center of my of my screen, yeah. so I need to be. <laughs> so there. technical problems aside, which you know practically seem to be a weekly part. I should put it on the schedule this week in technical problems. Um, this is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew in every sense of the word, fifth ed D and D campaign. I'm your host. And GM, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. This is Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. 
Also a name chosen that seems to have a lot more resonance than what I, what I intended when I created it, but it seems to work quite well. Uh, this is, as I said, a homebrew campaign set in the world of Omatia. The first campaign set uh, in, a, in a particular time, the year 4118, I believe. Uh, this one set a thousand years before that, in a, in a time of great turmoil and upheaval, when everything seems to be, uh, you know, maybe I didn't think this all the way through when I named this campaign and created it, because it, it is a little 2020, but... Uh, since 2020 is coming to an end, maybe everything will be fine and dandy in the world of Amesha, the small uh, water uh, inlet of Elthwater, currently under siege by storm. But that's enough for me for a moment. Let's uh, have our players introduce themselves, starting with Silas. Uh, hi, I am Pat, playing Silas Marsh, uh, navigator and cultist, <clears throat> and uh, he is not... Uh, sick with a cough, but I am. <laughs> uh, to be Hi, proper, I'm that's Silas I'm Mosh, playing... by oh. the way. Just want it's, to, it's, it's supposed to be Silas Mosh, but none of us can do a Boston accent worth anything. So, <laughs> I'm Marie, and I'm playing Annie, and I also have a cough, but that's just asthma. Okay. Do we have a, a full set of coughs, Nax? Maybe. Uh, Hi, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half or cleric. And I cured away my cough, but no, I have a workout later on, and sometimes I get like a little cough after working out, so I, I can be one with the coughing crowd later. Well, okay. I, I suppose that's another check uh, check box on the list of of things happening in in December, in particular. At some point, uh, if you're playing the uh, LOTDI bingo, I'm, so, I'm sure the cats will make an appearance uh, at some point, a little bit later on. No, because my door's closed. Oh, well, we'll have to make it. <laughs> Kitty's banned from the room. <laughs> we'll have to make it happen. All right. As I look at the wrong set of notes, here we go. Uh, a little recap of what happened previously. A thick fog buried Elthwater, part of the unending storm, making it nearly impossible to move through the streets safely. As an accident, just behind the three bells showed Annie and Medrick. They rushed out to help, finding an old man's cart knocked off its axle after being run into by a younger man's cart. In addition, a woman carrying a bag full of turnips was supposedly knocked over in the fray. The group helped them get on their way, learning a little bit more about these citizens of the town. Silas, at home, made his way into town after seeing his parents and his son at breakfast. The group decided to venture to the Cold Pack Lighthouse to ask if they could borrow their breathing pearls, as well as gain perspective on the storm raging over Elthfodder. With Jonas's help, they were able to determine that the shape of the storm could only be described by two centers, not one. One was in the bay, as Silas predicted, but the other was in the middle of the town. Meanwhile, Medrick admired the innovations that Jonas had made to the lighthouse in order to create even more light. It seemed that the inventor's natural instincts were in line with Ignis's teachings, and he wondered about creating an everflame at the lighthouse. Annie, meanwhile, watched the seas and spotted a ship coming into the bay, fighting against the storm. It took a moment to find the flag, and then she recognized it. It was the errant widow, the ship of Gaetano, otherwise known as Sir Uswin the Unsinkable. The three of them watched the ship change tactics to find their way through. In particular, they noted the diligent effort efforts of Captain Stoutheart, lashed to the wheel with a sword embedded in the deck for extra stability, a strange bird fellow in the crow's nest directing the ship, and the steady rhythm of oars pushing against the waves. It was close at times, but the ship managed to heave to the dock in the end. Armed with this new knowledge and the hope that the storm could be overcome, the friends rode back into town. And that's where we pick up, I believe. Uh, I think you were still, it's still uh, later on, well, mid-afternoon, I think, because you had left after having a little bit of, of, uh, of a meal. They kind of rushed their supper ready for you to yeah. try to keep <clears throat> you to staying at the, the lighthouse forever. Um, the sensation of we are the only people we ever see. So, so people visiting is a great occasion for all, including the two kids, uh, as well as uh, uh, Harriet herself. The kind of fancy dishes come out. <laughs> yeah. The ones with less chips kind of thing. <laughs> But uh, having determined that you needed to keep moving, you went back on your horses, rode back into town, 
Uh, the storm, I believe, had shifted from the heavy fog to mostly just rain at that particular point. The streets themselves being almost nothing but a constant muck and mud. Um, the few cobble streets, the, in particular the main street that runs from the docks all the way back to the Royal Road, is one of the few largely cobbled streets. But even it is starting to collect mud and dirt, and the stones are starting to heave a little bit under the constant pressure of rain. What would you like to do? Um, well, Silas looks at Annie. He says, we know it's in the, the market section somewhere. I don't know if it's underground or if it's in one of the buildings, but um, you said it was near the guard tower. Maybe we can ask around, like, ask the guards if anything suspicious happened since the attack. That's when they would have put it up. Um, um, Mark? Yes? Could could you possibly, um, on roll 20, uh, go into the map page like that we had the that you can mark on mm -hmm. and mark about where it is there uh, very possibly let me bring up the right interface here I think I have I do I have the map as an actual um, space in roll 20 so I'll switch over to the map page I just remember marking, uh, us marking the chase thing. Yep. Uh, you can ignore the people that are on this particular map. I, uh, I haven't uh, updated it, so we use it as a sort of uh, a map towards the uh, when the invasion happened. But you can see the public market is marked right there. The guard tower. Mm -hmm. uh, I will move some of these people out of the way. Um, although Riemann is kind of... Uh, it's not a great portrait of him, but he's kind of situated where the where the actual um, uh, uh, <laughs> words are also something apparently that it leaves me when I have a cold. Uh, near the guard station, near the uh, the windmill, I've just put a guard there where um, where the fancy restaurant is on the opposite side of the public square. Um, okay. And as you should be able to tell, um, there is the main road. This is the Royal Road up here that runs to the, mm -hmm. the top of this map. It's not actually north. It's actually oriented um, with the bay being the bottom part of the map, which is actually sort of southwest. But um, And that main road is the cobblestone road that runs all the way through, all the way to the docks towards the bottom. Uh, as well, where currently Medric and the Guardian are staged on the map. Let's move the Guardian there as a as a as a marker. Um, cool. A cool, few cool, cool. other of the points of note: that red square, uh, that is actually where um, where Annie lost the the young woman who was apparently watching them when she chased her over. Um, the Left or right, yeah, left side of the map actually uh, has the tower of or the former um, Everflame Tower, the former um, place of Ignis. And right about, I think it's in here. I am going to create an updated map, but in, in here, which is just the left of the Royal Road, is actually, um, I don't think I have it on here otherwise. I'll put a little square there. Uh, it's actually where um, the uh, where Marigold's warehouse was. So I've named that one as another place. Three Bells being on the opposite side. I don't know if there's any other places of interest. I guess there would be another one probably right about here, which is um, um, Wishes Blacksmithy, uh, just off the, the main road, but closer to the docks themselves. Cool. So the... The spot that seems the most likely to be is just to the left of the public market. Um, that's where, roughly where the, uh, where the, 
um, map that Silas and Jonas worked out would have. Cool. I'm just going to try to add a few things here. Oop, that's too big. I'm just a very visual person. That's totally fair. And honestly, I had hoped to create a better map, but I haven't had a chance to to do so yet. Um, but I will, I, I do promise to do so. I just don't promise when. <laughs> I'm fine with the live updated map, like right. just updating this page. Will do. So something is better than nothing. Yeah. Like this right now, like for our purposes, it's fine. It would be like nice to have a have right prettier map, but I mean, it's not, not, it's not necessary. It was one of those things like, I need a map. Oh crap, I need a map. All right, here's a map. <laughs> wow, that's ugly. I'll just say it's, uh, it's somebody's bad map. Yeah, that's it. The cartographer was terrible. Always blame it on your fictional cartographers. It's so much easier that way. Well, the cartographer might have been drunk, you know. <laughs> See, this is this is a copy of it, so it's not as exact. Right. I kind of imagine you guys have gotten a hold of a copy like this. It's sort of the tourist map, and you're slowly <laughs> adding and writing things onto the tourist map. Um, exactly. But that, that sounds completely like something that Annie would have done. <laughs> So here, uh, you, Pat. Uh, well, you said it, uh, it was to the left of the public market, like there, or like just under the guardhouse, or somewhere around the guardhouse? I mean, I'll put a little uh, icon there to represent how how much you, th or how accurate it is, but your, your, your accuracy yeah. is not going to be tight with this particular map, given that it's also not really um, an, app, an accurate map to begin with. Uh, okay, so I will do a little, let's see if that comes up. There we go. So that's probably approximately <laughs> the area you think you can actually um, pinpoint. Which isn't really pinpointing much at all when it comes down to it. But um, Does anybody remember the name of that restaurant just offhand? The uh, Silver Button? Wow, good job! It was a silver something. I think I think silver button has gotten it. That's that's a remarkable. Yeah. Job. Good job. <clears throat> it's usually not like me to remember things like that. I'm 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 super impressed. Not not. Who knows? Be... Next time I might actually be able to be able to like remember my own schedule that falls on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not get ridiculous. But if I didn't have calendars, I would remember no schedules. I got a calendar. I just forget to check it. Then, I, and I also forget to add things into it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Slowly annotating this map. Uh, when I say Marigold's workshop, that's the basement workshop he was working in, not his storefront, which is in a different place. Let's see if I can remember put that here somewhere. I don't have the name. Does anybody remember that name? That would be a really deep pull if anybody remembered that. What name? Uh, Marigold Shop. Uh, um, I probably wrote it down. <laughs> it's a long name. Is that the end of my other notebook? Give me two seconds. <laughs> Oh, wow, it's not actually in this set of notes. <laughs> it's not in my notes. Isn't it the potion shop? It is, yeah. He sells potions, creams, okay. and, and uh, spices. Because then I would have it. Do you still have those fancy spices? Because he might want to buy them. <laughs> I mean, he still has quite a, quite a selection. 
they would be not exactly selling out right now, but there would be a high demand for anything that might improve people's uh, uh, experience. So I would imagine that he's actually been selling pretty well during the the crazy storm period. Oh, but like you know that trait that Annie got, uh, and there was like fancy coffee in there. Wasn't there like fancy spices too? Nope, just Maybe. coffee. I think okay, just crap. Because I was gonna say like if there was spices, we could like sell them at a high price before we take before we take down the storm, and that way we can make like a killer profit. <laughs> wow, that's mercenary. <laughs> Annie would not be okay with that. Um, no, I don't have the name of Marigold's okay. shop in my notes. I would just leave it as Marigold's <laughs> shop. It was a long name, and I'm surprised they don't have it in my own notes, but it was essentially um, something like potions and and, uh, and stuff. <laughs> well, that's not really useful. Potions and stuff. That's potions the new name. and stuff. <laughs> that may become the official uh, name. I really have to uh, I really have to to go through my notes and edit out um, a little behind the scenes every week what I do to create my notes is I could make a copy of the previous week's notes and add on to it deleting what I need to I haven't deleted for a while <laughs> so <laughs> I have a lot of different variations of the same thing going on here anyway uh, where would you like to go what are you guys going to do uh, discuss uh, Silas. Yeah. Uh, the camera boxes are gray. Also, to Mark, Silas's yeah, box and Annie's boxes. Oh, they're back now. Okay. You no, know, it's a weird thing that sometimes when I cover over the window, they go gray. Like there. Oh, they're gray again. Mm -hmm. Where did you yeah. go? I think if the window is <clears throat> completely covered, it does. Um, I'll okay. try to watch that. Thank you for noting that. No problem. Uh, Silas, you've lived here all your life. Yes. Do you notice anything different in this area as of a few weeks ago? Uh, I mean, he'll take a look around. As far as I know, he hasn't seen anything in the last times we were here. But So are you, I, are, where are you, are you looking? You mean in the public market or just in town? Generally? Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming we'd just be walking around in the public market, like looking at stuff. Okay. The market itself hasn't really been set up in full uh, since the storm started. People tried for a few days, but they also noticed there wasn't as many people coming out to the storm as well. So mostly right now, um, there are a few there are semi-permanent stalls that are empty. Um, the uh, main center of the square um, actually does feature a storm drain, which is currently pouring through water that's uh, coming from the different uh, different directions, the different streets that, that gather there. Uh, make an investigation check as you look around. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? That I don't know. Um, uh, the more specific you are looking around, just anything the more, that... more likely you are to find something. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> I mean, we got a nat twenty on investigation for a total of nineteen. Um, hmm. Yeah, Silas would just be looking for anything that seems unusual. Okay. I mean, if Medric expects this to be used like the storm device to be used kind of as a war weapon, it would have to be somewhere elevated, probably. I guess. Uh, yeah, well, the other one's at the bottom of the bay, so maybe it would be like either really high up or really down below. Well, it, it would be somewhere that's not obvious, I don't think. Yeah, I think it, like, size things, it's probably either down in the, in the sewer system where no one's going to see it, or it's in. A, a room or a shop of some place here that whoever placed it here owns or or otherwise controls so that we wouldn't see it um either way i got a nine so okay 
Um, all right. Well, uh, is Annie participating in this, or, or what is Annie doing in the meantime? Because they're going to be looking at this, you expect, for quite some time. And in fact, I'll go ahead and say that you're going to spend a couple of hours kind of poking around this area. I mean, I'll... I'm looking at the wrong character sheet. Um, what can I do? You know what? I'll, I'll take a look around as well. Okay. Is there anything in particular she's looking for? Um... I feel like she she spent a fair amount of time wandering when she first got here around, and so she's looking for something that seemed odd. Okay. Oh, that teetered on a twenty, uh, but that's a fifteen. It literally like teetered between the the twenty and the fourteen. <laughs> I think there's some sort of deal with dice makers that 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 is supposed to happen fairly frequently because I know the number of times it's gone from 20 to I think it's five or something right beside it from oh right I oh pretty much it's either two or eight yeah. <laughs> two eight and 14 okay so um oh, yeah, 15. all right uh here's what happens as you look around and and and, and try to to figure out and gauge this space um First off, Silas, you start looking around at the different stalls and you're kind of remembering um, some of the people who've, who've worked <clears> here <throat> and um, noticing that your stalls are not only completely empty, but they look like they haven't been used in a while. There's a bit of mud building up on some sides of them where wagons have come through and splashed up on them and the owners haven't been back to actually even bother to clear it off. Uh, even if they could in this heavy, heavy rain. Um, you do find a leftover potato. Uh, it has sprouted uh, and uh, seems to be doing quite well in the combination of muck and rain, um, even despite the fact that it's not really finding too much for soil. It's got its, uh, li its uh, not limbs, but its roots kind of sprouting upward to gather in the rain, but also sideward to kind of uh, root itself in and around um, one of the cobblestones, it's found a, a gap there and is fairly strongly in. Um, aside from that, you also find uh, two gold pieces and one copper piece that got uh, uh, kind of lodged beneath the, the uh, potato. For... You know, I, I wish the potato luck. <laughs> <laughs> the lucky potato. Another business I'm going to have to have somewhere. In, I'm going to write that down. The lucky potato. <laughs> and figure out what the entire legend is, the 45-year history of the lucky potato. Uh, Annie, in, in particular because uh, you received a little bit of time with um, Verandel when he sort of deputized you. Uh, not a lot of time yet. You've kind of given a fair amount of, of free reign at the moment. But uh, Verandel had pointed out, uh, you know, the, the way that the city is laid out is kind of chaotic, but there's a general pattern to it. Um, the main route here, the Royal Road, is the most heavily traversed place in all of the town, uh, and they do kind of continually work on it, um, which in the back of your head you're also uh, sensing a little bit, not so much sensing, but uh, feeling maybe a little bit of, of pride because it is connected to the Royal Road and indirectly in some ways connected to your own family. And even here in this, this small town, even under the, the tough times they've had, um, they are kind of repairing it. Um, but they have, uh, you know, uh, some difficulty with the, the water buildup that comes from when the, when the, um, when the uh, tide comes in and fills the entire bay. Um, there are numerous... Uh, uh, entrances uh, to go in and clean up the uh, the uh, overflow that happens when that happens and you spot one of them um, as you're going by and notice that uh, while many of them are are uh, have a lock on them uh, the lock on this particular one seems to be defective uh, it looks as though it's locked but it is not um, essentially it is like a, um, a cellar door um, where it is sort of at a 45 degree angle and there's a little a built up space around it and then there's a door which can flip open 
and you notice that uh, maybe it's because the water has rushed in as you find uh, uh, sort of uh, mud build up around the bottom of it, uh, but it does seem as though it's somewhat neglected and the, the lock practically falls off. Um, it's rusted through. Um, aside from that, uh, you kind of note that the businesses around the, the central market the, the, the buildings in behind are still open. They all have uh, lamps lit up in their, in their doorways. Um, some of them are even uh, standing on uh, what are makeshift porches, uh, trying to call out to the few people that pass by. You do see a few people come and go, but for the most part, the place seems to be very much abandoned. Um, what had been, from your brief time here before, uh, a very thriving market uh, has now all but... Uh, ironically, dried up. Uh, but you do notice that some of the businesses are, are doing well. There's a pub not far away that seems to be doing well. Um, you suspect that uh, from the every time a door opens, there's a bright light from inside and uh, warm singing that, uh, uh, again, people are singing, uh, seeking solace. Um, you happen to notice uh, Riemann actually go into one of the bar nearby as well. Um, but he is wearing his official... Um, tabard so perhaps he's on duty um, for uh, Medric you're spending a lot of your time looking upward which also means spending a lot of time getting water in your eyes it gets a little frustrating uh, and then you kind of hold out the shield and, and note that uh, while the shield is small it does seem to do a pretty effective job at uh, keeping the rain away from you uh, it sizzles slightly uh, as it uh, hits the, the shield. It's not that warm, but uh, the contrast in temperature between the cold rain and the base heat of the shield, um, the Blessed Ward of Ignis, uh, does give you a little bit of extra uh, space. Uh, and as you look around, looking upward to see if there's any vantage points um, where one might put a weapon, if, if you can call it that, when one might put a, something like this, um, you note the, the top of the uh, windmill would be an ideal location. It is actually one of the tallest buildings in the area. Uh, the veins of the windmill have, have long since been taken down, but you can see there's still, there's actually an opening in the side of the building where the, um, where the shaft had gone outward to connect to the center part or to connect to the veins of the windmill. Uh, that part is open uh, as well and would make a great spot to look over um, this area, um, it actually faces, well, the top of the windmill actually can turn a little bit to face the wind, uh, but currently is facing out towards the bay. Um, you would imagine, given the gust of wind around you, that if they did have the veins of the windmill, it would be turning wildly uh, and uh, churning quite madly. But all that mechanism, um, you assume, has been taken out long ago. Certainly on the on the base floor you'd seen, which uh, which is where the the guard station uh, primarily is, all of that mechanism has been completely removed. Although you did notice a bit of wood in the ceiling where they basically filled it in. Looking around as well, you see um, uh, several other buildings, uh, not quite as tall. Uh, some of them do have uh, uh, slanted roofs. Most of them do not have anything that would be very useful to uh, to be able to uh, put anything on, or you'd have to You'd have to, you know, build a platform. You don't have any idea the size of what you're looking for, but you imagine it must be of some substantial size at least. Uh, and nothing seems to come to mind for that. You do, however, spot uh, a, a dim figure on the top of one of the buildings. Uh, it's uh, further down uh, about, uh, let me say, another, well, there's no blocks as such, but about a block further down the main stretch. Uh, in the direction, uh, kind of across the road from Marigold's workshop uh, as, a, as a dark figure. Uh, you see it for just a second. seems to be looking in your direction. You can't make out any details uh, because it's too dim. The clouds are too thick. Uh, but as soon as you kind of spot them, uh, they seem to dash away and, uh, and uh, are out of, out of sight in a second or two. But you get the feeling you are being watched. Does that seem like the same figure that was spying on us when we were like going through the remains of the Tower of Ignis? Um, 
I mean, it's really hard to tell from this distance, and there's not much detail, but it, it conceivably was about the same size. Okay. I'll let Andy and Silas know that I saw that figure and that it just dashed away. And I'll keep in mind, uh, I'll keep the building he was in, or on top of, in mind. Okay. So uh, we could probably go investigate that place. It was a humanoid. Does... Hmm? Uh, it was humanoid. Okay. Is, does does uh, Medrick point out which building it was? Oh, yeah. Is it anywhere near that open gate? The one with the lock broken? No, that's um, that's kind of off to the, um, well, again, kind of the, the left of this map. I'll say right about there, uh, or actually closer there to where that corner is. So kind of just around the corner from where the, um, where the guardhouse station is, roughly across the Royal Road from the Silver Button. Uh, the building he saw would have been a little bit further down on the opposite side of uh, where Marigold's work, uh, workshop is. Okay. I guess I can include those as additional POI <laughs> on the map here. Uh, I'll do them in a different color just so we don't get too confused. How about that? I should have been annotating this map all along. I'm going to think of it. <laughs> but then again, I didn't think of it. So, um. <clears throat> there we go. All right. What would you like to do with your information and your potato? <laughs> I think you're muted, uh, Silas. Yeah, I didn't take the potato. Oh, okay. No, I just wished it good luck and left it there. The potato will thrive. Oh, you didn't pick up the potato? Damn it. Do you hmm. pick up the potato? Yes, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the potato refuses to be picked up. It looks at you resentfully um, with all of its eyes. Well... I mean, definitely, well, if someone's watching us, the building this isn't necessarily the thing. They might have been just happened to be on that building while we saw them. But, I mean, we could certainly check out that building. Uh, I think we're going to have to check out the sewer system as well. Uh, as Lovely. unfortunate as that uh, may be, but. Uh... Sounds lovely. Mm. Um I would, before we do go indoors, like to let Varendel know. I was thinking about that. Uh, let him know that one of the sewer gates was open uh, and that we're oh, going to be going cool. down. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. I, I think we should let him know, but I don't think he should bring out the guard. No. I no, think we have to... We Let them know in. if we go missing, that's where we are. Yes, definitely. Um, I think if they if if he ends up bringing a lot of people in, then they're just going to to leave. Um, but yeah, yeah, we should definitely uh, talk with him. Um, Do you want to check out the building first or the sewer? Uh, building first, sewers later. That's good. Sure. And uh, if we're being watched, if somebody sees us enter the sewer, they'll, they'll know we're coming. Would it be possible to get a key for a gate elsewhere in the sewers? That, that, that is why I wanted to talk to Verandel. Because Perfect. he might also have a map of the sewers. Which would also be mm. useful. Yes. Good idea. I'm chairman now. <laughs> um, Silas is, uh, she's a, 
I'll keep an eye on the building while you go talk to the captain. Uh, and then he'll just kind of like move into an alleyway and then uh, strike his staff lightly against the ground and cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. Uh, can I get the map from you? What map? Ooh, I'm not here. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> The shadowy figure in the shadows hands you a shadowy map. Whew. That becomes less shadow. Um, so yeah, I'll calmly walk to the, the guardhouse. Nonchalant, whistling a jaunty tune. Completely, totally normal. Everything is fine here. What are you talking about? Exactly. Okay. Um, Verandell is inside, uh, pouring over... Uh, what looks like possibly reports or possibly correspondence. It's, it's just sheaves of paper at this particular point. Um, one of his other guards is there uh, giving an oral report um, as you as you kind of come in. Uh, he stops. Uh, the, the guard uh, um, but uh, Verandell uh, Gestures you to come in, take a seat, and gestures for the guard to continue. Um, the, the, you're familiar with this guard? He's one of the ones you met outside before. Um, and while he regards you with a little suspicion, it's not much, and certainly at uh, Farindel's insistence, uh, just decides to uh, continue. Uh, that's uh, Silas's hide roll. Okay. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, it's with the plus 10 from the spell. Okay. <laughs> All right. That makes it a lot more, um, mm -hmm. a lot better. That actually makes it a pretty crappy roll. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. Oh, sorry. It's three lower than that. I did the thing wrong. So it's even worse. Okay. Yep. Um, so the, the guard continues. Um, we've had several reports of some sort of figure moving about the town. Nobody seems to have a consistent uh, description. Uh, generally, about you know, a little shorter than me, I think. Uh, nobody's had any interactions with this person, but uh, people keep complaining about it. Uh, particularly, uh, Hagatha keeps complaining, saying that uh, they're going to, I don't know, steal her, um, steal her, her, her sewing needles or something. I don't know if she has anything of value to steal anyway. Uh, Particularly down by the docks, although generally, uh, from what we had reports, everywhere across the town. And Barrendale kind of nods. Anything else? Um, well, sad to say, there were uh, two people killed yesterday. Looks like some sort of, um, I don't know, bar fight got out of control. Nothing terribly suspicious. Everybody who said at the scene, um, they just didn't like each other. In the end, they stabbed each other. Nobody really lifted a finger to stop either one of them either. Ah, uh, messy business, but unfortunately normal. A lot of people are kind of on the edge right now. Berendel kind of nods. An unfortunate happenstance. Um, would you be so kind as to tell Dr. Marigold? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll drop by. And, uh, that's the end of his report. Verandell tells him that as soon as he's finished with, uh, talking to Dr. Marigold, he can go back home. Uh, thanks him, and then, uh, nods to you, Annie, on the way out, and then leaves. Verandell's attitude changes immediately from the sort of officious, uh, you know, uh, serious, I've got to listen to this report, I've got to do that, to uh, a smile that warms up across his face. It's good to see you. Uh, you look extraordinarily soaked. How are you doing, Annie? Uh, I'm extraordinarily soaked. Um, I'm getting an echo from somewhere. That's weird. Um, uh, but the, uh, I'm sorry to say that I basically have another report for you. Uh, 
Have you been able to find out anything on uh, on the storm or anything else? I think that's what you were looking into. Yes. Uh, first off, um, we saw Gaetano manage to get through the storm somehow. It was kind of amazing to watch. Uh, uh, he should be somewhere. Um, but also from there, and I spread out the map on his desk if there's room. Um, when you go to spread the map out, he pushes aside the, the different correspondence you can see. Um, you see actually, uh, as he's moving it aside, that one of the pieces of paper uh, has a thick wax seal that was wrapped around it, uh, but you don't see what the seal is from. And he kind of moves it all, stacks that into the middle of the pile, and shoves it off to the side of his desk. Uh, and I see you've made a few additions. Uh, Silas has. I'm not much with with charts and stuff. Um, but from his and the light keeper has keepers work. Uh, this is the general area where they think the center of the storm in land is, and that there's a second one. And I'll show him where the one in the water is as well. I see. That's a little beyond me. I've, I've never been much of a student of magic as such. Um, but if I'm assuming that's what this is. It most probably is. Um, while we were looking around just to get a feel of anything that looks weird to us, uh, I did come across a sewer gate that has a broken um, lock on it. Oh. And uh, there was someone watching us from one of the, the buildings, and I'll say which building it was. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't have, there aren't really addresses as such, but you can describe the building adequately. It's, it's two stories. There's a storefronts on the base floor and what looks like to be probably apartments or residencies of some kind on the second floor. Um, Varendo's... I mean, I'd, I'd say what the storefront was. Sure. Um, we'll say it was a, 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 um, a seamstress's one with a shop window. So you can actually see some of the dresses that are in the, uh, in the storefront. Um, Verandol is, is, uh, is uh, interested in this material. Uh, he does ask you which, which gate it was that you saw the lock broken. Uh, and you'll have, uh, I'll, I'll have a new lock put on that. Uh, we've noticed a few of them have been broken through. Uh, there are a few people that have keys. Um, maintenance has to go down there once in a while and, well, uh, move some of the um, not liquid through the town it also serves that as a sewer fair. system uh, not just a drainage for well the water coming into town but also as the core sewage um you're not thinking of going down there are you we are uh, well because uh, it seems like a very convenient place to hide something uh, that's one of the reasons we've kept it locked and try to keep an eye on who's got the maintenance keys it um, can be a little dangerous down there. You don't want to be caught if the uh, tide starts to come in. It tends to flood and backfill a lot of that space. Good to know. We'll have to do it at low tide, tide then. Uh, but yes, we we were planning on going down there to see if anything was is being kept down there. It just seems like too convenient a thing. Well, from what I've seen of it, and I've only gone down there once myself, it's nothing more than tunnels. Um, there is a, a maintenance storage shed here and there, just to make sure they don't have to keep pulling their tools out, but they have heavy, heavy doors on them to keep them from getting flooded all the time. Uh, some of my... Some of my men have gone down to do some routine patrols. Um, they haven't reported anything really all that 
Delightful. I'm afraid it smells very badly. Um, they haven't seen anyone down there besides the maintenance people. Although, well, there have been rumors that there's some sort of creature living in some parts of it, but I don't think anybody's seen anything of it. I'm pretty sure it's an old wives' tale or something told to keep the kids from breaking in down there, or, or perhaps from keeping undesirables from using it, as you said, as a, um, well, a, uh, a place to hide things. We've never noticed anything down there, though. And furthermore, there's, there's no real rhyme or reason sometimes to the directions it goes. It seems to work. It was built over, I guess, a few generations. Um, apparently dwarven made, so it's sturdy and should last sturdy. for forever. But uh, um, there's no particular organization. The only thing that I've ever heard anyone describe it, uh, some of the maintenance people know it by, by memory, I guess. But the only thing they've ever described is at least water flows outward, except at high tide when it flows in the opposite direction. <laughs> Sounds terrible to me. I think the best plan would probably be to have one of those maintenance people come with us. That way we don't get lost. Um, but I do think that we should at least do a once over with uh, someone who knows magic and knows what to look for. Well, there's not a lot of people that I would recommend for that, but I can find someone who works for the tunnel maintenance to go with you. Um, and I have the magic. I have Silas and Medric who know magic, so. Good. It's quite a capable team you've got there. I suppose we'll need this. And he um, opens up a drawer and uh, fiddles with something and hands you a uh, a... a heavy metal ring that has two keys on it. Uh, the smaller of these two is the one that we've used to keep all the locks on the gates closed. You mentioned the one gate which is missing its lock. We'll have that replaced soon. But this would allow you to get through that. The other key is, is uh, for uh, internal gates. There are different places where the pipes are blocked off. Uh, by uh, metal barred gates, and that should see you through the rest of them. The keys look fairly simple, but um, strangely, uh, despite the ring having uh, a bit of of rust and show of, of age and wear, the keys themselves look immaculate. Uh, they're kind of thick, uh, heavier than you might expect for the size, uh, but still not very large. Um, the smaller of the two keys is about uh, the length of your longest finger, uh, and the larger of the t two would be about uh, the size of midway through your palm and your largest finger, for comparison. Um, Fair enough. Aside from that, and aside from making sure you don't stay there when the water comes in, um, I don't have a lot of advice. Uh, hopefully... Um, well, I can find someone in maintenance who knows most of the tunnels, but I don't know if any one of them knows all of them. Which area are you looking to examine? Uh, directly under us right now, basically, this area. And I just point, like, the general area around where we think the center is. Yeah, I think Marta takes care of that. I will uh, see where she's hiding. Uh she tends to keep to herself most of the time. A bit of a, a miserly sort. Has worked for the town for, I don't know. I could probably say centuries, but that wouldn't be entirely right. She's only human. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean anything wrong by that. I, I just meant that, well... She wouldn't be alive for centuries, most likely, if she's if she's human. Um, if she were an elf, maybe, but uh, and you know, half elves, we sometimes have. Long. I didn't mean anything. I mean, awkward. <laughs> I like humans. Humans are fine. Uh, it's fine. 
So, you said something about being watched? Yes, this is the second or third time now that we've noticed someone watching us, so... As you heard the report, a number of people have mentioned something about some shadowy people moving about town. To be honest, though, just about everybody looks like a shadow right now with the heavy um, storm overhead. Um, I'm not sure what else to say, but if you feel like someone is watching you, then please take some caution. That is, that is our plan at the end of the day. Oh, also, is, is Raymond working right now? Because I just saw him go into a pub. Uh, Raymond just finished his shift, so it okay. wouldn't be surprising if he decided to find a bit of a bit of luxury in a rough day. Fair enough. I just found it odd that he was still in his garb. Uh, maybe he's conducting an investigation. I don't. I don't think so. But uh, I'm afraid that. Um, Respect for the sash has not exactly been the greatest in a little while. Unfortunately, due to the expansion we've had to do after the attack on the town, um, I've had some difficulty in maintaining discipline. Some of the people aren't really the same sort of type I'm used to working with. A few of them are soldiers, and they take to it well enough. Uh, but others seem to have a bit of a rougher... Um, countenance. I mean, it's to be expected. I just found it odd. That's all. No, I appreciate you pointing it out to me. And me, the player, I think that's everything that I was supposed to talk to him about. Uh, Did he say he had a map? He, he's going to get us a guide. Okay. Um, where should um, Marta meet you? Uh, the easiest place to find us is usually either, honestly, the bells are here, so. All right. When should I say for Marta to be there? Um, I don't know when low tide is, but low tide. Okay. So low tide today is what you're saying. The the next it, low tide. What, what's the tide at all? Probably. Um, the tide was going out when you left uh, the coal pack lighthouse, uh, and it would be returning now. So there would be another low tide coming up later. This is Mark not knowing nautical stuff. So uh, honestly, I'm not really it's, sure. It's basically but... once a day. Yeah. Uh, well, the high tide is uh, twice a day, I think. But yeah, um, uh, there will be another low tide tomorrow, basically. Yeah. So, whenever okay. that would be. <laughs> I'll make a note. Learn more about friggin' tides. Okay. Tides. I know how to make tide charts, but that's about it. That's I know how I to remember. use tide to wash my laundry. Um, that's probably not a thing. <laughs> Um, you get the sense that uh, Verendel, um he's kind of waiting for you to, to ask more, eager to talk for longer, but he doesn't really have a lot to, to, to say himself. Um, he's happy to see you. So you'll be going into the sewers tomorrow then. I think you were muted or something. That's the plan. It's an easier place to start looking for something than starting to go through people's homes and shops and stuff. Do you have any idea what you're looking for? I can ask my people to keep an eye out. The best thing I'm looking for is something odd. It would be Silas or Medric who have maybe a bit more of an idea, but some magical items don't look magical. That's true. Well, um, stay safe. 
Does that mean you don't have any oh. um, plans for later tonight? Not as far as I'm aware. If you wanted that dinner. I was thinking just that. I'm glad you brought it up. And so he, he makes a, he sets a, a it's not really a time. <laughs> There's no real proper timekeeping here, but um, he tells you that he'll meet you at the silver button uh, later. Cool, cool. So dinner. Yeah. Dinner. Um. Yeah, I'm really curious about that stamp, though. <laughs> I'm. I'm just gonna point it out. That that seems important. <laughs> um. He kind of shuffles his papers aside. Uh, you know, um, correspondence, trying to keep up with what others are doing, um, trying to see if there's any assistance coming, that sort of thing. Fair enough. You can make an insight check. Uh, helps if I'm in my skills. Uh, that's a 12. Okay. Um, he's more interested in you than this pile of papers and just sort of shuffles it aside. Do I get a better look at the, the seal while he's moving them around? No. And no. you kind of get the sense that that was intentional. Yeah. It got buried further Fair into enough. the stack. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I'll see you tonight, I guess. I'm looking forward to it. Um, maybe I'll find uh, something a little less um, military to wear. Fair enough. I'll find something a little less muddy and wet. <laughs> uh, good luck. Not that you don't have anything... I mean, that you could wear more that it's it's just, it's been raining for a long time and there's lots of mud that could, um, you know. I know. I'll see you tonight. Ah, good. I'll see you later then. And I'll head out. Okay. Dinner before Annie smells like sewer. <laughs> <laughs> you might say that she's trying to be a can of sewer. I know that was terrible. But um, I was on mute and I couldn't turn it off because the mute button kept disappearing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Everybody was laughing at my joke, but you were all on mute. All right, I accept that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't laughing at your joke. <laughs> Leave me to my fantasy. I'll bring you to yours um, here in the game. Anyway, what are you guys up to in the meantime? I'll check to see if the building where we saw the shadowy figure is occupied. I mean, we don't have, we can't say like guard business, move aside. So if it's not, if it's not, if it's not occupied, I'll try to walk in. But mm -hmm. otherwise it's like, well, I guess we're waiting for Annie. <laughs> you, you can always say that if you like to, you can just barge into places and, you know, take all their stuff. I mean, you have that option as a, as being, uh, it's not probably a good option. Um, but the, the building where you saw that, uh, that person standing above, um, as I described, is is first floor, basically storefronts. Um, there are two storefronts. There's the the uh, seamstress and there's a tailor on the other side. So um, generally uh, feminine and male clothing. Um, there does seem to be a, a central pair of doors between the two of them um, mm -hmm. that don't have any labeling on them, but they uh, seem to be uh, street facing doors that don't enter into those bu businesses. Uh, you imagine that uh, probably if the upper part is residences, this leads to stairwells that go up. All right, let's go look at that. Okay. The door is barred from the inside. 
damn it. It doesn't look like it, but as you kind of uh, tug on the door a little bit, um, you can feel that sort of uh, 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 resistance. If they had barred it from the inside, uh, it probably wasn't part of the original design. And you kind of imagine that many people in town, following your own advice, the one you guys were giving out for quite some time, in preparing for the invasion, uh, actually took extra cautions and, and uh, did things like put bars on the inside of their doors. Um, it seems like they're still highly well, that practice. Can't really blame them. Um, I'll walk around the building. Is there like a fire exit, like a ladder that I can climb up or anything? I mean, these buildings wouldn't exactly be to anybody's fire code. Um, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> um, but you do see that that uh, there is a, a, a sort of back uh, balcony um, on each side. Um, it it actually serves as a bit of a, of a roof for the lower levels as well. So you can see that there's kind of a back porch uh, up on the upper levels. Um, you can see there's an no, open... Uh, it's a space about, uh, about four by five feet. It's not very large. Uh, and there does actually seem to be uh, some sort of uh, extendable uh, ladder that people have to to push off the side of it. Okay. So if I were to climb up that, would I just end up in somebody's house? Or... <laughs> well, the the ladders are pulled up at the moment, but if you were to, you could climb up the beam or try to climb up the sides, and it would be the back part of someone's house. Uh, there's no lights okay. on inside at the moment, however, that you can see from the small back windows. Although you do 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 notice a a bit of smoke coming from two different chimneys on top of this building. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna get back to the main market square and wait for Annie because chances are, like, so I I forget if it was Annie or Silas who mentioned it. Uh, make he was a, probably just like happened to be passing on that rooftop. Make a um, perception check. Hey, how did I just roll something? No, I didn't. Nope. Because I heard the whoop. There it goes. Eighteen. Eighteen. As you're turning away from the roofs and turning away from the building, um, you do catch sight of someone uh, on a roof about two buildings over, just barely. And the only reason you saw them is they kind of walked in front of the smoke from one of the stacks nearby. Uh, definitely seems to be a humanoid, smaller than you, like shorter than you, more slender than you from what you can make out from this distance. Uh, and then as soon as they notice that you've noticed them, uh, they take off running and vanish over the peak of the roof on the other side. The direction they would be going would be uh, towards, uh, well, on the map, towards the top of the map, essentially. All right, so I'll follow them, but on the ground. Okay. Um, what are the other two doing at this time while uh, Medrick is running around the back roads? I was watching the building from an alleyway. Okay. Um, you can make a perception check as well, although it's it's harder because you're not in the same same side. I mean, I did. I'd imagine that this is happening while. Yeah, it's okay. while Annie is in, inside and on her way back. Okay. Um, you don't notice a person at the top of the building, but you do see uh, Medrick as he runs down, and you can see him sort of um, through one of the alleyways, uh, definitely taking off and running. I'll try to follow him. Okay. Um, are you going in towards the alleyways? Or are you following him parallel from the main road? What would, what would be your strategy? I'm just going to run after him. Okay. Um, Annie, you you come out of the building and see uh, Silas take off towards one of the alleyways. I'll follow Silas. Okay. Uh, Medrick, uh, as yep. the person following the closest, everyone else seems to be following you. Um, you're a little easier to spot because the, the slight nimbus of light that, that uh, surrounds you most of the time. Uh, but the person you're pursuing uh, has gotten out of sight. Uh, make a 
Let's call it a survival role to try to pursue them. Nice. Um, you get a, a bit of a, of, a, of a sense of instinct as you know where the other side of the other building is, the one they, do they dove behind, and realize that it overlaps on its roof with another building behind it. And thinking, even though you can't see them, that must be where they've gone, uh, you turn and, and run down that alleyway. And sure enough, uh, you see someone uh, uh, coming down uh from a, not a makeshift ladder, but actually climbing very well down a, uh, a balcony, essentially, down to the ground and landed on the ground about 40 feet away from you. Um, you can see that they're, they're dressed in, uh, looks like tight-fitting dark clothing uh, from just a little bit of a glint from the, the, the uh, uh, torchlight, or rather, yeah, I guess essentially torchlight nearby. Um, there's some surface to it, which is not uh, not cloth. It has a little shininess to it. Uh, but they're, <coughs> they're 40 feet away from you and look quite surprised, or at least you imagine they look surprised, except the fact that their entire face is covered in shadow as well. Okay, it, it sounds little... like sounds very diamondy. y um, What do we do? I might have a spell for this. I thought I had a spell for this. I guess I didn't prep it. Maybe. All right. Well, I have one of the spells I was thinking about. Okay. So I'll cast hold uh, hold person. Oh, nice job. Okay. The what's, the, what's the uh, saving throw in that? It is. I think it's um, thirteen. Okay. Versus what? Wisdom, I believe. Yeah. Wisdom. Okay. Ooh. God damn it! Uh, as you as you uh, invoke Ignis and a little bit of flame flies up around you, uh, the figure seems to hold for just a second, but then its form seems to shimmer and it takes <coughs> off running. Um, and then I charge after it again. <laughs> oh, did we lose somebody? Looks like we lost uh, uh, Marie. Hopefully she'll return in a second. Uh, I'll say at this point, Silas, uh, you've kind of seen him, uh, seen Medric stop. And naturally, everybody's in the wrong order now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like coughed while I was trying to mute myself so that you didn't hear me cough. I was closing this You thing. coughed sorry. so hard, you knocked yourself offline. That's kind of neat. All right. <laughs> uh, Silas, you can see where Medric is, and you see the little flare of fire. Um, you're about uh, 30 feet away from Medric. Uh, and si and uh, Annie, um, you've seen Silas dart, uh, dart off into uh, one of the alleyways. Okay. Uh, I need to... Sorry, I just need to change something to allow the text to show up. Sorry, I'm distracted by text, which is terrible. There we go. Um... What, uh, let's, uh, we, let's continue with it, sort of Medric, Silas, Annie, because uh, Medric has kind of got the jump on them. Sorry, them, Medric, Silas, Annie. Uh, their instinct is to run and dart very, very quickly. Uh, Medric, what would you like to do? I dash after him. Okay. Them. What is your speed? Uh, 30, I believe. Okay. Yeah, medium-sized creature. Okay. So that means I'd get, like, 60. If I'm dashing. So you're you're keeping pace with them, but not getting any closer. What is Silas up to? Um, well, I assume that all I can see is Medric. Yep, and you see Medric kind of flame up for a second and then dash offward out of sight. Mm -hmm. No, then no, I'll no, dash after him. Okay. You round the corner and can easily see Medric about uh, 60 feet away and probably dash after him, so you're about 30 feet behind. Uh, Annie? I will double dash, so 90 feet. Okay. Nice. Um, so, from where you are, you essentially catch up to Medric um, as you kind of round and pass by Silas, uh, taking your, your, your fast and, and, uh, and swift uh, uh, strides. 
uh, and on your left, catch up to catch up to Medrick, yeah, who's who's kind of been charging along. Um, Andy, as you look ahead um, and see the sort of figure that Medrick is chasing after, uh, while they seem to be cloaked entirely in 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 uh, dark clothing or shadow or something, um, the approximate size and the approximate shape is very similar to the the girl you had seen watching you before. So, you remember, Annie, that this girl seemed to know the streets pretty well. And with yep. a sense of deja vu, you see her dart suddenly into a side alley. This isn't actually too far away from where you lost her last time. Um, she will make a roll. Do do. Uh, uh, hmm. Weirdly enough, it's hard to notice Silas in all this because the uh, pass without trace mm -hmm. spell will be still active, which is kind, yep. of, kind of weird. Okay. Oh, okay. All right then. Uh, you see her dash off into a side alley, and. Uh, Medrick and Annie, you both hear uh, the sound, uh, the sudden surprised sound uh, of uh, a, 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 a woman's voice, a very high-pitched voice, so probably younger, uh, as she rounds a corner, slides on some mud, and crashes into the side wall of the alley. Um, you know exactly which direction she went to, and she also gets slowed down a little bit. Uh, Medrick, what are you up to? It's your turn. I'll dash off after her again. Okay. Um, you, uh, She's only about 45 feet away. So you get within 15 feet after running. You still have an action if you want to try to take something then. Um, from this distance, you can very... Uh, well, let's put it this way. You, you easily make out that it, it seems to be uh, a young woman or possibly a tall uh, uh, gnome. Or, a, I mean, it could be an elf, for all you know as well, uh, but it does seem to be a, a, a woman of some kind. That's partially because of the voice as well. Only about 15 feet away, and uh, but again, as she kind of glances over her shoulder, uh, you see nothing but shadow where her face would be. Okay, I'll, just, I'll, keep, I'll keep dashing. I'll get to the other side of her, because I'm assuming Annie's coming okay. right after me to corner her. So you, you, you run and kind of pass by her. This alleyway is narrow. Mm -hmm. So are you going to try to pass right by her? If I dash up to her, can I grab her as a, can I grab her as an action? Unfortunately, that is your action is to do the yeah. dash. Then I'll jump over her and land on the other side. Okay. Gracefully. Uh, as you move by her, she tries to trip you. So it's but I'm jumping. Be, yep. She reaches up and tries to grab your leg so that you will not make a graceful arc, but instead face plant. At least that's her intention, you guess. Uh, that would be... I might fall on top of her, which would be painful for her. But... <laughs> that, that possibly could happen. Uh, let's see how the rolls go. So it's going to be uh, contested against your, in this case, athletics or acrobatics. Mm -hmm. You can choose. Athletics. athletics. Okay. Athletics means you're making a powerful jump. It won't go as far. Yeah. Acrobatics would be a higher jump, um, but uh, athletics will be fine. Uh, that's against her her uh, strike essentially. Oh, geez. Okay. Damn it. Uh, as you kind of go to to go, I'm gonna I'm gonna get around her. I'm gonna get, make that. Do, do, do. The stride's getting longer and longer as you as you leap up, and you're quite proud of yourself because the leap is going pretty well until you feel uh, one of your ankles get caught by her hand and twisted, and you find yourself uh, on the ground in the mud on your back uh, with the wind taken out of you. Uh, you're going to take one point of damage because it's not a damaging attack, but that's from the blow itself. But you are uh, prone now. Um, yeah, I'm not actually putting the icons on the map. It's it's a little bit of theater of the mind here because not all the individual alleys yeah. are also shown. And by the way... I'm just keeping alley, my HP on the map. Sure. Uh, an alley, by the way, is defined not so much as a road between two buildings as the space between two buildings. 
So this is a very this is a fairly narrow alley, and the alleys are random wherever the buildings happen to stop and, and go. Uh, and you're off the the uh, the path of the cobblestones at the moment. The one thing you will notice, uh, Medric, is uh, you thought uh, you know I'm I'm chasing after someone. I can jump over them, get to the other side. The timing of the strike and the skill of the strike was very well done, um, and. It, you're not chasing after an average person, or at least you don't think so. They seem to know what they were doing. They got trained in this. Um, that makes it uh, Annie's turn. Uh, well, I would like to um, dash as a bonus and run my full movement and catch up. Uh, I will not try to jump over her, but I will try to basically flop on top of her. <laughs> okay. Can try to pin her to the ground. Yep. Okay. Um, that would be your um, athletics. Can or I do it acrobatics because I'm trying to aim my body more than force? Okay. All right. You can do acrobatics. Um, she's going to use uh, kind of the same, the same sort of thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, oops. All right. Ah, I rolled a dirty 20. Oh. Uh, so or, you... No, 15 plus 6 is 21. 21 oh. meets. Meets. There you go. So as you see, uh, kind of come running around the corner and see Medric try to hop over her to try to corner the person in the middle of this alleyway, um, you see her reach up and twist his, his leg such that instead of landing gracefully on his feet, he lands not so gracefully on his back. Uh, she, the, the person then spins around, sees you coming, and tries to put her leg up when you go to jump on top of her, but doesn't. But the, the mud on her boot uh, seems to slide just off the side of your hip, and you come, cl- come crashing down on uh, a person. The person is, is uh, uh, a little bit shorter than Medric, a little bit shorter than you as well, actually. Uh, but now you have them sort of pinned to the ground. If she's shorter than Medric, she could be six or four too, though. It's <laughs> true. But the closer you get, the the smaller you realize she actually is. The shadow form around her seems to also give it uh, difficulty to understand how big she is. But certainly, when you have someone grapple to the ground, you have a pretty good indication of who they are or the size they are. Yep. Uh, even so, even this close, uh, you're still seeing nothing but shadow across the face. That was your move bonus and action, Silas. Yep. Um, you see the you see Medric and Annie both dart off into this alleyway. I run after them. Okay. As you run down and get to the edge of the alleyway, you can see Annie uh, straddling whoever it was. Medric heroically blocking the exit by falling on his back. <laughs> I, raise, I raised the staff. And I command the person on the ground, stop. Oh, okay. That is a saving throw? Wisdom saving throw requires that their next action be used just to stop. Okay. Command was the first spell I was looking for, but I took it off my list. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Wisdom saving throw. That is a 12. I don't think that's enough. Uh, Let me... I think you said 13? Uh, yeah, I've got a three charisma, so I'd have a, a, a 13. Okay. Ooh. And your command was simply stop? Yep. All right, then. Um, Annie, you feel the person struggling underneath you stop suddenly uh, and in, in time with the command that echoes down this hall, uh, this uh, this alleyway coming from your, your, your suddenly very commanding friend, Silas. Um, you can kind of feel almost the ripple of magic as it warps its way around you. Uh, but they, they, they stop struggling for a moment. Uh, and indeed, um, don't struggle to free themselves uh, underneath Annie. Medric, it is your turn. I'll get up. <clears throat> Damn it. Get my wind back. Which, which I'm assuming happens like in a second or so. Mm-hmm. And I'll ask her, like, why are you spying on us? Okay. Uh, make that an intimidation roll using charisma. 
It sounded pretty yeah. intimidating to me anyway. Yep. <laughs> so, wait, what? Okay, so plus four. It's one of my train skills. Yay. Dice roller, I closed it accidentally. I know this normally hey! kind of with intimidation or with charisma. Oh, wow, natural 20. Okay. Uh, let's let's have her roll of resistance, but it's not really that much of a roll. Um, mm, 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 uh, yes. Yeah. No. Uh, so, what did you what did you say again? Why are you spying on us? Okay. Um, the voice that comes out is is lighter than you might have expected. Definitely uh, uh, a female voice. Definitely sounds much younger than you might have expected as well. Um, let me go. I didn't know if you were trustworthy. Uh, Annie, make an insight check. Ookies. Well, that is a 15. 15? Um, yeah. It wasn't so much what she said but how she said it. There's a sense of refined control of voice rather than the average person. This person seems to have some training in speaking, you might even say. It's not something most people would pick up on, but you know those kind of classes well. It's the kind of ones where they say, you must speak like this and you must make sure you pronounce everything clearly. It's sort of one of those well, things. Keep that, your voice the same and mm -hmm. don't show emotion. And <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like we'll let you go. Well, or we won't hurt you, but we're not letting you go just yet. Um, just let me go. I don't mean to do any harm. Annie. That doesn't answer my question. Actually, sorry. Be Silas next. I went a little oh, out of okay. order last time, but Annie was closer anyway. They're not struggling because of your command, you presume. And well, command only lasts a round. Yep. So, um, I'm assuming she's not struggling because there's like a big orc and a uh, young lady on top of her. Um, well, she's not even struggling against being held. She could probably push Annie off or at least wriggle out from underneath her, but... She's not even trying that. You know that the command held. Uh, hmm. Well, uh, I just say, uh, you haven't answered my friend's question. Why are you spying on us? Okay, just got to check my notes here a little bit. Okay. Um, I just, I didn't know who you were, and I had to make sure. I'm still not sure. Please, just let me go. You want to be sure of what? That will, mm, hmm. I've heard stories about you. And I've heard you come to help from time to time. I didn't know if I could trust you. I'm still not sure. Well, we haven't hurt you. If we let you go, do you promise not to run off? You may... You may regret that. We just want to talk. You said her face is covered in shadow? Seems to be. I'm going to reach down and try and take the shadow off. Okay. The shadow remains. Slap her in the face. It doesn't seem to have any, any substance whatsoever. Um, you accidentally feel flesh beneath it as you just poked your cheek, probably. Uh, is she wearing a hood or something? Um, does appear to be wearing some sort of tight-fitting hood, but the shadow itself seems to extend without cloth. I'm going to pull the hood back. Okay. Um, 
And you pull the hood back and it reveals, um, where is the description here? Um, very dark hair bound tightly into a bun um, in the back of her head. Uh, very long hair, which is kind of unusual. It's unmanageable for the most part. Um, does appear to be um, a young woman. Uh, and it actually, yeah, actually at this point, the shadow does disappear from the front. Uh, and you can see a young, a young, very young woman there. Um, Annie, from your perspective, being that close and from Silas, who kind of just pulled back the hood, um, you'd say she's a early teens at best. Um, looks uh, bright, wide eyes, uh, ruddy cheeks, um, probably from the exertion. Um, clear skin. Um, let me see. You would see light blue eyes from this distance as well. Um, she doesn't look familiar, exactly, but there's something familiar about her. Hmm. Can I? Can I really trust you? You're the one who was spying on us. I didn't mean you any harm. I just had to be more sure. You can generally trust us. I mean, we we do our best to help this town. It's been so long since I could trust anyone. I've been so scared. I've only found a little. I mean, bit if you ask us to kill somebody, we, we might report you. But otherwise, we're good people. Silas is standing in the background, slightly covered in shadow, being the. Uh, yes, I'm. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, I'm the scary one, and uh, Medric and Annie can be the friendly ones. Well, you did step forward at one point to pull the hood off, but I do totally accept uh, the yeah, that you step back. Step back up once, um, once just for additional effect, a, a crack of, of thunder sounds overhead, and for a moment there's a backlight uh, just showing the shadowy form of Silas, very scary, down the other end of the alleyway. Yeah, don't mind him. He's just a performer. We, we should go somewhere, somewhere more private. I'm not the only one watching don't... people. Was Good that your only one? What? I'm not the only one watching people. There are a lot of eyes in this town. All right. Where, where do you have in mind? There's a place I hide sometimes. I suppose I can take you there. All right. Lead the way. We'll follow you. Just don't make it too hard for us to follow. <laughs> don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to continue holding on to your arm. And she kind of half smiles. It's okay. I understand. And you let her up? Yep, I let her up and I like hook arms with her like we're friends on a stroll. She looks over at you and um, there's a strange sort of half smile that crosses across her face. Uh, there's almost a sense of relief in a weird way. Not that she's being bound, but that you are holding her in a way that would be very familiar to a friend. Let's go. It's not far. And she leads you down the alleyway. The path is a little bit convoluted, only because you don't seem to travel these alleyways much. She, on the other hand, seems to be pretty familiar with them. She leads you down to another alleyway, and there is a storm cellar entrance that seems to be held by a very strong lock. Um, I'm going to need both hands. Fair enough. I, I, I let her open the door. Okay. Um, she reaches down, and actually from uh, a, a uh, small uh, pocket, apparently, that's tucked into the small of her back, she produces something, Annie, that you're fairly familiar with, uh, a set of tools to pick the lock. Deftly enough, the lock is opened. It's a heavy one. Um, she carefully lifts it off and opens up the doorway down. If you follow me, it's not much, but it's my home away from home. And her voice breaks a little bit when she says the word home. 
lead you down into the into the dark basement. A few seconds later, there's a lamp lit from deeper within. There's a smattering of boxes, a lot of dust down here. You get the sense that whoever had used this hasn't used it for a long time. When all of you are in, she carefully uh, uh, closes the door once again and hangs the lock in a way that it almost looks like it's it's hooked and closed. I've heard a little bit about all three of you, but I didn't think I was going to be making introductions anytime soon. My name is Sable. And Silas, that's not a common name around here. Mm. When you came into the town um, quite some time ago, your parents and the elders of the clan made a point of finding out who lived here, who the major players were, that sort of thing. And the name at first, because it's un uncommon, uh, strikes you. And then you remember where you heard it. Because the people who run this town, more or less, are the Baron and Baroness. And their eldest daughter is Sable Harquin. I was right. <laughs> she extends her hand to Annie uh, in, a, in a way that... Um, Annie, you kind of recognize the sort of uh, slight formality in a way, she's trying not to be formal, but there's just something that she can't help that you pick up more commonly than others would. Uh, Silas will say, um, Annie, this is uh, the young lady Harquin. It's a bit of alarm when you say that in her face. I suppose. I thought so. I suppose it's no point in hiding it from you. Wait, the Baron's daughter? Yes. I am. Oh. And I was the Baroness's daughter, too. But she's no longer my mother. I knew there was something wrong with her. Something didn't feel right when we were there. Something hasn't felt right for a long time. I managed to get out from time to time. At first it was just for my own freedom, just to get out of that place. And then it was to see how everybody else lived. I've never really left the estates much when I was younger. But when things changed, I stayed out longer and longer. I, I don't know if you can help. I don't know if anybody can help. I don't even know what's wrong, really. All I know is they haven't been the same for a long time. And I miss them. What were they like before? We've met them only once. <laughs> the Baron wouldn't speak unless we addressed the Baroness, who was hiding under a bunch of veils. It's like it was being mind-controlled. I don't know what's really going on, but my father used to laugh. He used to tell me stories of his days sailing. Uh, <laughs> probably stories that aren't really fit for a young woman to hear, but my dad would tell them with flair. My mother would scold him for maybe being a little too reckless in his stories. But she laughed, too, back then. But it's it's changed. My mother was sick. Something terrible. She was in bed for weeks. The strength was gone. Her skin was so pale. And then it changed. She was herself for a while. She was even more herself. She was energetic. And it seemed like everything was was going well. 
and she changed. She stopped laughing. Father stopped laughing too. We children have the advantage of, well, not being underfoot. We can keep to ourselves most of the time, and we did. But I think she's still sick. I just don't know of what. Is there anything like am I in that description that I would recognize? In what context? Have you done dealt much with illness or? I got medicine trained because. Okay. Cleric. Um, you can roll medicine. Okay. Oh. My good rolls come to an end. <laughs> uh, the, have we had cat appearances? Great. Um, the uh, <laughs> I should read the chat more often. Uh, in fact, I'll switch away from the others. I'll have to adjust the uh, screens here in a second. We don't really need the, the road maps. Uh, but naturally... Jay was sitting beside Pat. Uh, naturally, everybody is in the wrong positions. People! Stay, Pat, get off me. Stay where you're at. <laughs> Um, from what she's saying, Medric, there are a number of unfortunate diseases, um, which can cause some sort of wasting, some sort of, of, uh, of slow diminution. Uh, there are bloodborne diseases. There are uh, actual, um, curses sometimes. There are a lot of things, um, without g getting more symptoms or having seen her when she's sick, you really wouldn't be able to make much of a, a diagnosis. Uh, and it sounds as though um, Sable didn't really see her all that much. She described her as kind of kind of uh, going more and more pale and bed bound for a long time. That's about it. All right. Silas's expression softens a bit because he thinks he's someone needs to be the uh, the uh, the bad cop, but he's a dad. Um, so he uh, he go he walks over to her and puts a hand on her shoulder and says, "Your parents are influenced by some dark entity. We don't know the name, but that is the source of their problem." I'm starting to think my mother is the dark entity. I mean, she wasn't. She was kind-hearted, a bit. <sighs> A bit rules bound, maybe. I mean, I've been known to break a few rules from time to time, and she's been known to yell at me for it, but nothing like this. She may be possessed by something. When she got weak, maybe something snuck into her that's controlling her. Maybe. Took advantage of the situation. It is something that we have thought to look into, but we have not had the time yet. I'm sorry to bother you this with this. I, I, I just heard things, and I, I wanted to see who you were. To see if any of it was true. Oh, I'm Medrick, by the way. Nice to meet you. I know. And you're Annie, and you're Silas. I know who all of you are. I've watched you for a while. You You've mentioned noticed. other people are watching too. Sorry, what did Annie say? I heard Medrick, but I didn't hear Annie. We've noticed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm better at it than I used to be, but it's still hard sometimes. Even with this, and she reaches back and pulls the hood up, and you see the shadow once again fall across her face. And she pulls it back. Um, yeah, I've seen others who are are moving about the streets. Some of them seem like they're up to no good, I guess. I, I don't really know. That's something my, my dad would say. Others seem to be, I don't know, just going about their, their work, but... 
And like like others, like Doctor Marigold. Do they have? Oh right. I was going to go talk to him, but I saw you were already there, and I I kind of got a little scared. And she looks at Annie. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to entirely run away like that, but it's hard to know who to trust. It feels as though it feels as though everyone at the house except me and I have to check the names here just a second. Um, because I forgot to bring that sheet up and review names because I thought, oh, they'll, they'll have a hard time. Oh, they caught her. Okay. All right. Have to um, <laughs> remember that bit of uh, plot. All right. People and places. Here we go. Um, do all right right it's been hard to know who to trust whatever my mother says people do felt it myself like what you were doing Medrick and what you did Silas she has power over people uh, but has she always had power or is the magical ability something new well I mean she's my mother and she's always been a bit stern but I mean not like this the people who work at the house, they're all terrified. Some of them have gone missing. I, I think they just got fired, but I do wonder. But Florentina and Edward, uh, my younger sister and brother, they seem to be okay. They're, they're dealing with it. But I don't know if that's just because they're scared or, or they don't see it or, or, or maybe she's told them to be. I've always had a bit of a rebellious streak, I guess. I Annie kind of grins at that. So maybe that's build up more resistance to her voice. I, I don't know. Dad has none. He doesn't laugh anymore. He barely says anything. I, I think he's scared. Where, where did you get the shadow hood? Uh, <laughs> well, have uh, you heard of uh, the diamond by any chance? And she kind of looks up sharply when you mention that name. It was a gift. I guess I've got some friends still. <laughs> I guess I've got a gift here. from the diamond. <laughs> we won't judge you if it is. We've had dealings with him as well. Um, I didn't hear what Silas said. Do I want to make sure I clear that before? Oh, I didn't say anything. Okay. Yeah. What? Um, yeah. Um, the the diamond gave it to me. He just showed up one night, and we talked, and I told him how scared I was. And I've run into him a couple of times out here. He seems nice. We don't know if we can trust him. Like He seems to have similar goals as what we do, but different ways by which to achieve them. He did probably save our asses in our last battle, though. <laughs> I get the he feeling... also sent people to kill us earlier. Yeah. That too. I don't know a lot about him. He seemed nice. He listens. He gave me this, which... I mean... It, it changed how I could move about. I could actually hide. And except for a few people, I could, I could get away from just about everybody. And kind of looks over at Annie, who tackled her. I can't stay away too much longer, though. They're going to start to notice. I don't leave at the same time every day. And now that the town seems to be covered in, in darkness a lot, 
it's a little easier to get away during the day and, and, and be here, but if I'm not back by supper time, somebody might notice. Florentina has been able to sort of hide it a couple of times, but she's only eight. She really doesn't understand it all. Mm -hmm. I think you should go back home and keep an eye on what's going on. Um, if you can hide a book or something to take notes with, it would be useful if we knew more of what was going on when we try, try to figure out what we can do. We do intend on, on fixing this. It is something that has caught our attention. And I think it would be safer for you there than here. <laughs> I don't know about that. Here, out in the town, is the only place I feel safe. I've even been able to just walk around from time to time without this, this hood and everything. People don't tend to look too closely if you're just dressed in a maid's outfit. They talk to you plainly, and there's a certain feeling of safety and a bit of freedom. Exactly. Yeah. And, and nobody seems to notice too much about my mother and father. I hear people talk, and mostly it's just complaining about taxes or or this or that, but I don't think people really know. I think maybe we're too far away. I know some people have noticed, and I know that they're trying to help in any way that they can and are trying to figure out what is going on. People in positions of power. And you? You three? And us. Yeah. I was so afraid of coming closer to you. I, I didn't know. I mean, Mr. Marsh, your family has quite a reputation. And... Much of it deserved. And Mr. Medrick, well... I don't think you remember, but I actually saw you come off the boat when you first arrived. You had a pretty <laughs> fearsome look on your face. And Annie, I don't really know much about you, but you seem trustworthy. But I've seen a few people who look trustworthy before and change. You must promise that me. That is fair. You must all promise me not to tell anybody anything of my uh, of my travels or that you've seen me or met me at all. I fear if Mother finds out. Well, something bad could happen. We will I'll not talk to nobody. nobody. But you must stay with your family and watch what is happening. We, we need to know what's going on there. If we're going to be able to do anything. The, the being that controls your parents is not the diamond, but I don't think you can trust the diamond either. He is not like us. We're not sure what he is. We know uh, he's not up front Medrick, of the You know, when Medrick said that <coughs> doing things like us, uh, he's interested in the same things but he is not on our side. I don't believe he's on your side either. I think he aims to use you. So deal carefully with him. 
I appreciate your concern. I, while this is happening, I pull out my notebook. Okay. And I open it and start pulling a paper out. Um, and I'm going to take a, it's a very small piece. Um, and I'm going to write, um, what's something completely random. Um, she's fine just she's fine okay and tell her to uh next time she gets out she can come to the three bells and i will let them know to expect someone with this note uh and i've initial it uh to let them into my room i should write that down too <laughs> yes I'm, I'm noting it down here um she looks a little confused but accepts the piece of paper anyway um thank you that way if if i'm not there you still can find find me, drop off any information that you need. And she kind of suddenly lunges forward and grips you in a hug. She's a bit shorter than you and kind of her head is, is sort of diving into the sort of middle of your chest at that point. But it's a firm hug. And there's a, a bit of a sob that escapes as she, as she speaks. Thank you. So glad you. I'm so glad we. I'm just so glad. She kind of steps back, and there's a little bit of embarrassment, and she kind of wipes away uh, a momentary tear. And Annie, you recognize. I return the hug. Well, nice. Um, and and she's kind of happy to 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 receive it, but there is that moment where you feel a familiar feeling, that sensation of the training takes hold. And she kind of straightens up a little bit, steps back, wipes away the tear. Her face kind of goes, goes, uh, 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 takes control of the emotion quickly. Um, now, I don't think it'll do for me to be blabbering here for the rest of the evening. I'll take what notes I can. I'll try to get closer and see what I can see. And I'll, I'll let you know what I find. Thank you all. Not a problem. We're glad to help. At the end of the day, if it feels too dangerous, don't do it. I don't want you putting yourself at more risk than you feel comfortable. If it'll yes. save my parents, I'll do what I can. And she kind of... Uh, and I nod. Uh, wait a few seconds just to make sure no one Notice this has come out at the same time. She pulls the hood back over her and the, the veil of shadow falls once more. Who are the others spying on us and everybody else, I guess? I've never confronted them, so I don't know who they are. I didn't recognize them, right. but I don't know everybody around here. And do they all have the shadow hoods too? <clears throat> no. No, this is a special gift. And I think you're wrong about the diamond, Sorry, Mr. Marsh, but I'll be wary. I don't trust him, but I... He I don't sent, know. He sent people to kill us. I don't think he's good. Did he send them to kill us, or just... Yes, the first people we uh, encountered on the road that tried to ambush us and murder us uh, mentioned the diamond. I thought that was just because we got into their whole like cow smuggling operation. Well, I think the diamond may have been behind that, but uh, but no, I think that was a different group. Anyway, hopefully he's changed his mind. Um, Sable takes the moment to to head out very cautiously opening up the, the doorway above, closes it behind her. You hear a click. 
and then silence. How long do you wait? About a minute. Okay. The uh, room is getting a little bit warm. It's it's kind of airtight. The uh, little lantern she had is still lit up. And you go to push Silas will ask, Silas will ask uh, Annie how it went while we're waiting. She's not a, as good as me at hiding it. I knew something was, was up. But... I'm scared for her now. I actually meant with uh, with uh, Captain uh, <laughs> Captain V. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah. Well. Yes, she's in a dangerous situation, but. Um. The the captain is going to find us someone to help us through the. Um, the sewer, because there's not really, other than the people who maintain them, not really anyone who knows where they go. They're not very straightforward. Uh, and yeah. Medrick, you, uh, oh, oh he gave me the keys for it too. <laughs> yeah. Good. And I think, uh, you had kind of decided we were going to go at low tide the next day. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Well, that sounds fine. Uh, I'll basically tell them all the information that I that okay. I got. You find you have a little more time to talk than you realized is when Medrick goes up the stairs to try the door and finds it locked from the outside. She closed the lock behind her. <laughs> of course. Well. Is there a, I'll look around for a second exit. There do appear to be stairs that go up to the... Actually, no, sorry, it's a, it's a cellar. There wouldn't be any... That's why they have the door on the outside. There's no windows either. Hmm. Well, then. Um, Can you get us out of here, or should I use the uh, what, library way out of here? What do the hinges look like? Uh, the hinges are on the outside. They're on the outside. Thinking like a storm cellar door, essentially. Yeah. I would just think they'd be on the inside so that they don't rust. Maybe they did. Uh, yeah. Um, not really much I can do to pick a lock that I can't get to. Is it a solid door, or is it bars, or? Uh, it's wood. Slats of wood. Hmm. Oh. If we... Uh, da, 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 da. If I light I it up, know. it would bring attention to this entire area. Yeah. Um... I'm going to try to uh, suggest we try using my crowbar to break it. And then, Medrick, you have the mending. You can mend things, correct? I think so. Let me check. Do I have mending as, mending as a cantrip? I do not. You don't? I thought you did. No. Nope. Okay. Or does Silas have uh it? Nope. Well, no, for some reason, I thought you used it on the wheel. No, I was just holding it up while the other guy was fixing it. He, The other guy was using hammering, which is not a cantrip. It's a hammer. I could also use a hammer and pop out the hinges. Well, the hinges are on the other side of the door. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, like, uh, it, they'd have to be bolted down to, like, the door frame. Yeah. And if I hit it hard enough, like where the hinge is or where I'm expecting the hinge to be, like on the side of the door, it could like get the nails or it's like door frame, door, and the hinges are like my fingernails. And it's like if I smash it hard enough from the inside, it's like, 
Mm-hmm. You can turn and the then go like it, It's going to be loud. But, uh, yeah. But it's not going to burn down the neighborhood. <laughs> um. So what would you like to try? Hmm. Crowbar first, then hammer time? Yeah. Okay. Who's using the crowbar? This would be an Ooh. athletics it, check. It's a it strength a thing, so I'd give it to Medric. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. I really think that needs <laughs> to be like an official magic weapon now. This, this crowbar has come in handy a lot, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> 18. Okay, you jam the crowbar into the edge, um, kind of catching it up underneath where the wood kind of put, moves over the stone. And give it a heave. And as kind of Medric suspected, um, the hinges kind of pop out where they were stuck in the stone for probably a long time. Also, as, as Annie suspected, they kind of rusted a bit, so they twist and turn uh, and uh, come apart pretty, pretty easily. Uh, now you kind of are able to swing the whole thing as one large door open um, and set it aside and climb out. There's a bit of a of a uh, of a clunk splash as you open the door. And when you get outside, you notice that the lock was not put back in place. A spike was driven through the uh, two connectors. And the lock's still hanging there off of one of them. Actually, sorry, it would be on the floor, on the ground at this point. Well, I'm glad. You know, I hope she's not planning on using this uh, on using this as a hideout anymore. Let's see. Each of you can make an investigation check if you want to take a closer look at this. If you don't want to take a closer look at it, you don't have to make the roll. But I figured you might take a closer look. Oh yeah. Okay. That minus one is hilarious. <laughs> Because you keep rolling very well, so you're like you're uh, you're Ten. you're 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 innately worse than everyone, but you aspire to be greater. <laughs> Just really lucky, I guess. And what did you get, to Annie? Did you say one? Oh, ten. Okay. Well, <coughs> uh, Medric, you kind of uh, kind of pick up the the spike as you're kind of pushing on the door anyway, and Silas, you examine it, uh, and for one thing, it's a it's a heavy pretty common spike um it's used to uh to uh, uh hold large logs together like the dock for example um she had the lock right there so if she were intending to lock you in she probably would have done it with the lock although lock yeah. is a little bit worn um and there's just enough time that probably someone else slipped that in there oh yeah well, I mean, if you knew all that, that's fine. But now you kind of confirm it. Or at least confirm a suspicion. Yeah. Why wouldn't she use the lock? Well, it wasn't her. Yeah, but who would it be then? My guess would be the diamond. Goddamn spying people. Well, why wouldn't he oh, use the lock? He probably doesn't want us... Well, he's probably trying to warn us away from interfering with his people because that's worked so well in the past one thing occurs to you that you're kind of discussing this is that whoever it was and you still don't really have a confirmation of that but whoever it was knows that you met with her yep so Back outside once more. The rumbling and thunder now is the predominant feature of the storm. A little bit of rain here and there, but that's not not heavy, not consistent. It's one of those annoying kind of rains where you think, ah, I'm going to be dry and fine, then a big drop hits you right in the face, and then you maybe overreact and try to cover your face up over, and there's just no rain after that, and you relax once more, and the rain spatters in front of your eyes. And you just end up swearing at the sky as you walk down the street trying to decide whether you should buy an umbrella, just go inside and cover your head over with something and swear the outside world doesn't exist, just as a step into a mud puddle and realize it's all going to be rain and water and wetness from then. This may be me from personal experience. Yep. 
now, I know that Annie has something to, to do soon, but what do you what do you do collectively? Anything? You want to go somewhere drier to talk? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much we can do till the next day. Um, and the diamond knows that we've met with her. It's not necessarily the diamond. Mm, it could be, or it could be someone else. But... As, as as much as as you want to think it is, like I don't want us to get in the situation of being certain that it's one thing and not looking at anything else. <laughs> sure. But I, whoever it is, I hope it means she's not in more danger than she already is. That's my fear. I, I could. I mean, if we're not doing anything else until tomorrow, when the tide's low, I could potentially check in on her via telepathically connecting. I would, I would suggest this, possibly sending her a message saying that someone locked us in. They, uh, someone locked us into the cellar. They know we, we've met with you. Be careful. Something like that. Right now or before bed? That may just scare her more, though. Yeah. I mean, she's got to stay calm until we can go help. If she panics, yeah. um, I mean, now that I know who she is, uh, how old uh, is she? Like, I'm assuming we would know roughly how old the Baron's kids are. Uh, she's the oldest. She's 14. She has that sort of... That sort of look, uh, despite her age, of looking older. But as soon as you see her close up under the torchlight, as soon as you kind of know, and then, of course, having some sense of who the, who the kids actually are from popular knowledge, 14 is her physical age. But she definitely seems a lot more mature than that. I mean, she's almost an adult, but... Yeah. I don't know. Well, you You know this better than I do, so whatever you say, is whatever you guys prefer. Is you fun. know kids more than I do. Well, I know two-year-olds, but... Uh, I mean, around here... I mean, at least where you're not rich, 14 is not too far off from being an adult. But if she's largely been raised in the mansion all her life, I mean, I don't know if she's like, she's met with the diamond, but is she really someone who's, who's able to stay calm in a dangerous situation because there's possibly two different groups out there that might want her dead. Uh, I That's don't know. fair. I mean, I think we should contact her periodically and see if she's okay, but I mean, there are things I don't tell my parents because it's going to get them worried. And they can't That's actually fair. do anything about it. Um, we should try to do check-ins then at, at the very least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that, yeah, that ability of yours, Medric, will probably be quite useful. Can you contact Cathron with it? Uh, I haven't tried yet. I could do that later. Hmm. Um, my thing it just I, grants me this power, but I can only use it so much. Yes, I understand. He's granted me several uh, destructive abilities recently as well. Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> but what I mean is, if we get into a dangerous situation, if I've already exhausted the power g given to me by Ignis, sending messages to people. Over large distances, I can't use it to defend us. Yes. 
Um, That's fair. Uh, as much as I don't want to, not that I do agree, we shouldn't tell anyone. I do want to tell Gaetano. If you feel he can be trusted, then yes, I, uh, you would know him far better than we would, and I trust your judgment on this. Same, and somebody else already knows, whoever that may be. Exactly. If if anybody knows, I would I would like to make sure that he knows because he did ask us to get information. Um, Can he be trusted not to repeat it? He hasn't added me. Yeah. Trust me, if he if he managed to tell my parents that I was here, I wouldn't be here still. Yeah, I suppose. Well, is it probably, at this point, it's probably best for me to head back to the village and see if I can prepare some, I, gather together any equip, equipment we may need for our delving into the sewer system. Are we going to have the pearls of water breathing? And if we do, do they work through shit? Uh, one... We didn't have those. Uh, one of them was in use. Uh, so I don't think we got those yet, uh, but we'll need them for the outside. Uh, as, it would work if the sewers are flooded. Uh, I mean, it, it'll, it'll let us breathe under there. I've never tried breathing sewage before. I don't think it would be a good idea. Uh, but if we go and if we if we enter there before low tide, then any water would be rushing out until low tide ends, and then it'll start coming back in for right. high tide. Uh, we probably would have at least six or eight hours before we would have to worry about much. All right. Hopefully that's enough. And before. I go to rest tonight. Would you like me to send a message to Sable? Um, I mean, if you've got the capability, then uh, I mean, you might as well at least say, like, introduce oh. yourself and say that we can communicate with you like this. We may do periodically. Um, just hope you got home safe. Yeah. Yeah, something friendly. Um, she could probably use a friend. But should I let her know about the spike? I don't think Not so. Not now. Silas make, made a good point. We don't want to freak her out more than necessary. Understood. Well, then, uh, Silas will say, um, give me a shout if, if there's an emergency. Um, I'll see if maybe I can arrange for the use of one of the boats when we have to go out into the bay. That's not so immediate, but it'll have to be dealt with at some point. Um, good luck. Stay safe. You too. Okay, so Silas is heading back home. Uh, Annie is getting ready for her uh, meal. What is Medrick's plan for the evening, if anything? And it doesn't have to be clean something up. special. <laughs> I just clean up, put my stuff away, relax a little bit because tomorrow is going to be dirty. And... Pray to Ignis. <laughs> okay. Um, we're not going to probably do the full minute by minute on the the uh, dinner at the Silver Button. But, That's fine. But um, what, if anything, is Annie looking to achieve from that? Or is she just looking to have a pleasant night? She's 
It's just getting food. <laughs> okay. Uh, chit chat. Um, just in general, keep it light. Okay. Did Annie say where she had come from or where she had been before when they were chatting, or did she keep her to herself? I don't recall exactly. I believed I did roll a net 20 on my deception check for that. Um, I, I believe I, I did vaguely say that I was from, from the capital, uh, that I was from a noble family, and that basically I bounced off of his story a little bit on the wanting to be my own person and learn from the outside world type thing. Okay. Um, this evening, uh, in some ways, is similar, but there's only the two of you there. The place mm -hmm. is still mostly empty. Um, you've seen the uh, the waiter come in, take your order, that sort of thing, but there really haven't been anyone else, and you have a, a it's basically a room to yourself, a small room to yourself, uh, and this time. Uh, Maybe it seems as though the captain lets his hair down even a little bit more than last time, almost as though he feels more relaxed uh, and starts talking about some of the places that he's from. And you you recognize some of them. You recognize some of the, the, the really beautiful places. There's a museum he keeps talking about, um, which is... Uh, you get the impression that part of the reason he'd gone there so numerous times is that his family has a lot of things on display there. Um, they have a bit of a, of a reputation. And you start to think back and go, you, you've actually heard of some of the Verandell works. They are very uh, well made. Um, the criticism you actually would have heard from probably, um, probably your father actually, would have been that they are, they are lifeless and they don't have a spark. They are technically flawless, but but kind of lifeless. Uh, Ver uh, Verandell doesn't have the same opinion of them, but he also doesn't seem to really understand art in the same way. Um, as he described before, he wasn't into it. Um, but he is kind of eager to talk about the architecture, eager to talk about, about um, some of the parties that were back there. And you get a general sense that as much as he's duty-bound, he is feeling very um, homesick. And for whatever reason, even though you know that you've been careful to, to cultivate Annie as a, as a persona, as a look, um, you kind of find yourself falling into some of the patterns of, of behavior that he seems to respond to. You get the impression that he, he, do, he, held, he held his own with a lot of uh, nobles and very rich people and he's for, hasn't seemed to have consciously realized anything about you but subconsciously he's finding that reflection that he needs from you in this particular moment um, not to mention that he definitely seems to be signaling attraction um, but again there's a little bit of that which is because you're not like everybody in this town, <laughs> and and that there's a little bit, little fair. bit of that that sort of um, it is not only just because you're you, it's because you're not them. Um, not that there's too much contempt, but there is, again, a very common thing that happens with a lot of nobility that you've known. There is a sense of separation, a sense of superiority, and while he's not bad with it, it's still there. It's still there in in kind of his some of his his opinions. Uh, and and so forth. Uh, and I'm sure it's still there in me as well. Sometimes it's it's that you notice it perhaps in reflection more than anything else, yeah. and start to make you wonder about that. Uh, but he does tell you that uh, um, um, at, at sunrise the next day, um, Marda will be at the Three Bells waiting for you. Well, we'll we'll be down there at sunrise then. So after a, a very good meal, which I'm not going to indulge in describing at the moment, but 
uh, a very good meal. Again, he picks up the tab without even questioning it. Um, and some pleasant talk. And to a certain degree for you, I suspect there might be a little bit of nostalgia or there might be a little bit of, of homesickness generated by his, his, although he claims not to be an artist, still somewhat vivid descriptions of the places he, he came from, um, which you've passed through and seen and, and uh, are not entirely dissimilar to where you grew up. But. Yep. The evening falls. I, I feel like she'd she'd be very homesick right now. What did Annie decide to wear? Um, she probably only brought like two casual in her mind, but more fancy dresses. Okay. So I she'd just... probably wear the other one. The other one. Okay. I like how it's like I, I have this dress and I have the other one. <laughs> well, she, she wore one, so she'd wear the other one. Okay. The night passes uh, pleasantly. Uh, Verandell actually walks you to back to the Three Bells. Um, he has a a, uh, a an umbrella. Uh, it's a non folding umbrella that he picked up from a merchant who was coming through from a sunnier climate. Uh, it's made out of uh, sort of reeds that are woven together. And more or less keep the water out. It's not perfect, um, but it, it does serve quite well in this particular instance. Uh, and the captain insists on walking you back uh, because, as he somewhat jokingly says, uh, the, the streets aren't, aren't safe. Uh, because, and it's half joking because both of you are in the guard who are specifically there to keep the streets safe. But uh, so it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's not a, I don't think you're capable. It's, I know you're capable. I'm still doing this kind of thing. <laughs> yep. That's fine. Um, but you return I don't, back. I don't argue it. You return back to the uh, Three Bells and uh, Captain Verondale takes off. The bells are quiet this evening. There's not a lot of people in for whatever reason. Maybe it's the threatening storm. Maybe it's just people coming to the end of their coppers for the week. You're not really sure. Uh, just a few of the regulars that are there drinking quietly in the corner, laughing every once in a while to themselves as they huddle around the fire for a little bit of warmth. As night falls, and Medrick, you've taken kind of an evening just to relax and probably dry out, and probably hang out by the fire yeah. yourself in that nice familiar warmth. Oh, yeah. Um, That's how I'm bringing it, it's just staring into the fire. <laughs> it's actually pretty common. Um, the, the, you know, temples are great. Uh, temples are, are, are places to get together. They are places to to collectively worship, but every Ignean from the very first moment they joined the church uh, knows that a simple flame will serve as a conduit for divine power in those moments where you really need it. As the day winds down, do you send a message off to anyone? Uh, yeah, I'll send one to uh, name Sable. Okay. Just something to check in, like, hi, this is Medric. Or not even hi, because that's a word. <laughs> it's Medric. We can communicate small messages. I hope you are okay. Okay. Um, the response uh, from Sable is, this is really weird. I don't know if you can see me. Or just hear me. But it's nice to hear from you. Stay safe. And there's a weird sense of embarrassment. And you're thinking, well... Maybe she wasn't... Or she was indisposed at that moment. Um, I haven't caught up on Critical Role, but one of the favorite opening lines for messages that has been something that they seem to repeat is are you pooing right now? <laughs> but in this particular instance, maybe that was true. So I'll uh, I'll send a second one because I got two, I'm pretty sure I got two level three spell slots. Yeah. Okay. Who's the other one too? Oh, to to uh, Sable again. Don't okay. worry, we, I can only hear you. <laughs> well, that's Thanks and have a good night. That's a relief. I feel better just knowing that. 
how yeah how long are the messages i can <laughs> um i would also make sure that um i keep Randy is the one who's usually at the bar sorry uh are the bells sandy, yeah. sandy's usually the front person yeah uh I'll, I'll let her know that um a young lady might come to see me uh she'll have a little note uh and i'll describe it uh if if i'm not here you you can let her into to my room she looks a little confused as to why someone would need to be let into your room she's uh, she's bringing me some stuff and I like talking to her. Reminds me of home. Although you won't get much talking if you're not there. <laughs> She's, she'll wait for me. All right. That's Sandy, by the way. Sydney is the baker. Saffron is the brewer. In case you want to. I have to look it up every time, too, so don't worry too much. <laughs> I want to remember them. That's why I will repeat them. Um, okay. You go to sleep that evening. Uh, actually, uh, Silas, is there anything in particular you wanted to do once you got back to the village? Uh, there is, yes. Okay. Uh, however, you, uh, I'll mention what it is and you may want to leave it for later. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Um, Silas is going to take uh after he gets home he'll uh, i mean he'll have supper and everything and see his family um looks like it was and, a good fishing uh, day they pulled in uh, a pretty good load they've got extra uh, fresh fish for supper lots of crab to um yes. and after supper uh, uh he'll leave nikki with his parents for a bit and says that he has to go think on some things he'll be back uh, before bedtime and uh, he takes the staff and he walks off into the bay okay. uh, until he's well underwater um, and then he'll basically like uh, uh, sit in a meditation pose with the staff out on his uh, his arms and he's going to to try to commune with Mother Hydra. Uh, he's going to be meditating on what he has been doing and kind of trying to reach out with what do you want me to do? What is my purpose here? Uh, and he'll be going, uh, in his mind, he'll be going through uh, any issues with the clan that... Uh, uh, Aunt Odega uh, seems to be uh, keeping things from him. Is he supposed to be the leader or, or what? So he's basically trying to reach out like a cleric might. Uh, but for warlocks, there's no mechanical side to it. Um, and that's uh, if he gets nothing, then he'll just trudge back in, dry off and and uh, get ready for bed but uh i can just leave it there if you want to leave it for a while i think i think that'll be something that'll be interesting to start the next session with because we're getting to be about time right now um we started That's a little bit early because we had to end a bit early today um, but uh otherwise uh i think that we'll call it to a close i don't think i'm going to say there's anything particular lingering that evening it'll be a night of decent sleep um except, except potentially for silas we'll see how that starts out um yeah any last moment things before uh we get back into it or before we back out of it i should say <laughs> i'm just gonna roll a d6 to see how many charges he gets back on the uh staff, the staff. in the morning okay. sure thing why did it not roll the suspense. There it is. There. Two. Okay. Two. Well, I want to thank my players for um, for jumping in and uh, that little random encounter. I've been wondering if it was going to be coming to a four for a while. I actually thought it wasn't going to, which is why I kind of struggle a little bit when you guys did catch up with Sable. 
Um, but uh, you guys have plans. You'll be meeting Marta in the morning for a little hike. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching, if you have. Well, nobody chatted in chat, but that's not uncommon. Um, you could be watching this on YouTube. If you are, then congratulations. You found my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. This is filed under Legends of the Drowned Isles as a playlist, or Legends of the Drowned Isles, or L-O-T-D-I, The Great Confusion, is another playlist. If you just want to look at this episode, there are, did we say 20-something, I think, so far? One lost episode, um, unfortunately. Um, not sure exactly. I could look. I could look it up, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be mean and just be human and not like informed by machines or anything right now. But uh, if you are watching this on YouTube and you're thinking, "Well, geez, it was kind of fun. Uh, I wonder when they actually do this." Well, normally we do this on Sundays at uh, three o'clock uh, Atlantic time. This week was an exception, uh, but you're welcome to join us then as well. Twitch.tv/encaf1 for the live stream. Otherwise, you can find us on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I, and you'll find, I believe that, I forget if that goes directly to the page. I think it goes directly to the page. There's also Watchers of the Drowned Isles, which is an opportunity for you guys to chat, or us to chat. Nobody's really chatting there at the moment, but it'd be nice to have some chat. Um, someday. 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 Or maybe not. I don't know. It's just us. I'm fine with that. Uh, have a great evening. Uh, I, I, I feel like it's late enough in December that I can say happy holidays and no one will, will squint or, 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 uh, or stare at me angrily. It's uh, 12 days till Christmas Eve. That's true. It's past Hanukkah. There we go. There we go. Happy holidays to all people and all folks out there. Thanks again to my players. Um, I've been kind of sitting on the Harquin quest for a while while you guys get involved in other things. Now you get to do them all at once. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you guys are so many options. Die. You guys are going to die. Um, oh. That's encouraging. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Merry Christmas, everybody. You're all dead. Party Merry, Merry Christmas. We'll have an epic <laughs> session. It will end badly. Um, probably not. We'll see. I'm feeling weird. Uh, again, thanks to my players. Thanks for watching. And uh, that's it. Have a great thanks week. We'll see you guys next week.